Howdy Pitmasters, happy Friday, Mark here and welcome to episode 2 of Grill Cave Banter. My guest tonight is a bloke who loves his barbecue, uh, he's a guy I've been wanting to have a chat with for a little while now and tonight is my first opportunity to sit down, have a beer and have some fun chat with this guy. So um, without further ado, uh, I'll introduce my guest, he's Mikey from Mikey's Barbecue Safari. So let's not waste any more time and let's dial Mikey in right now. How we doing, mate? Yeah, yeah, good. Yourself? Yeah, good. Good to be Friday, hey? Oh, yeah, yes, absolutely. Friday at last. Uh, what are we drinking? What do we got there? Oh, this is um, called Number One. It's a Mexican corn lager. Nice. Yeah, made um, Bandelier Brewery, which is down in Warrigal, just down in Gippsland. Yeah, yeah. Um, they got some cracking beers, but uh, yeah, this... <laughs> This, this one's awesome. Mexican corn. Yeah, nice. So, yeah, get a mask. I'll have to give it a try. <laughs> I was just yeah, going, the, um, got the bent spoke uh, crankshaft. So I had an, I was in Canberra on the weekend and I um I tried their uh, uh, the sprocket, first one I've tried by them. And I figured while I was there, I'll, I'll, I'll try their stuff. And um, man, that thing was excellent. So giving this one a go tonight, the IPA, and um, so far, so good. So cheers. Yeah, cheers, mate. Uh, before we get into anything, I wasn't going to talk about footy because my heart nearly stopped last night being a Tigers supporter. But um, what's it like being a, a Pies fan this season? You must have had a mate, few mini heart attacks. Mate, I, I, I've had to make sure my ambulance inscription's been up to date. I've had <laughs> people text me some pictures of how to buy a portable defibrillator and all this kind of stuff. Like it's, yeah. but it's been good, but it, it's been just it's been just gut-wrenching. Like we just once yeah. can't we flog someone? These close games are killing me. Um, yeah, we're, we're, up, we're up against Geelong tomorrow, so see what happens. We got the double champ, so we're we're into it. But um, yeah, that's it. Look, you got that one loss out of the way. That's what you need to do to get you guys level headed. So head into it, and um, I hope you beat Geelong. Uh, I know we're going to probably have yeah. a few Geelong fans jump in here, but um, <laughs> yeah, I can think of a couple. Yeah, but um, yeah, no. <laughs> I, I normally I normally keep my like, barbecue and my footy. Stuff separate, because um yeah, yeah but uh, it's it's pretty easy to lose friends over a game of footy. You lose them for about a week, you know. They they come back in the end, but um yeah, I, I've got Carlton supporters avoiding me at the moment. Probably yeah. good thing too. <laughs> okay. I'm not I'm not <laughs> going to pull my head in about it. So, yeah. but, uh, what, what you got? What you got cooking on the weekend? You got anything planned up or? Uh, so I've just done uh, beef shorties today, uh, just because I haven't done anything yeah. since Monday. So um, did them today on the, the bullet smoker, um, and that was yeah, just a quick feed. And for the rest of the weekend, I don't know. I don't know whether I end up getting a chance to do something else. Um, yeah. I don't know. Father's Day, I'll probably just spend the day with the family, so I might get something done tomorrow. But um, we'll see how we go. What about yourself? Yeah, did a rolled pork shoulder uh, tonight. Just a. Small one point two nice. kilo or um organic pork and uh you know, so it only took about about an hour just over lump charcoal on the on the rotisserie. The rest of that and uh that that was that was pretty good. Knocked out some chicken wings as well and then just I just shoved a whole bunch of veg in the oven, let that do its thing. So yep. we got family, got family over at the moment, so I've been kicked outside. Um, had to light myself a a fire. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. it's about, nice. about seven degrees, about seven degrees here outside. So, yeah. yeah, right, yeah, yeah, cold. Yeah, I think it's about um, ten degrees here or something. But uh, yeah. be nice to get I out of there with a the fire. Yeah, I mean, I probably won't be cooking. I might be able to get a lunch in tomorrow, but I'm actually going to the footy. So, ah, uh, uh, nice. Yep, won't be cooked tomorrow night. But Sunday, oh, Sunday there'll be something. I've got, I know I've got something planned. Yeah, so, I, I actually yeah, have cool. an app. I have an app that I can log all the food I get. Yeah, yeah. Hey, hi, Scott. Michael's, how are you going? Hey. Um, uh, yeah, so uh, th this app, it's because I buy my food in bulk. Yeah, yeah, yeah. From the, from the farms. Like, I buy a whole lamb at a time, a uh, quarter of a pig at a time and stuff like that. And, you know, I've yep. got freezers that, you know, you, you run them down and you're the empty, and then they're full again. But you've got to remember where all the stuff is. 
So yeah. you know, you don't you don't find you don't find a leg of, leg of lamb from four years ago down the bottom of the freezer or something. So I've got this yeah. app where I can actually put down which fridge or freezer it's in and all the rest of it. And it's also got a right, yep. planner. So, so you sort of manage all like first in, first out sort of thing as well. And yeah, with the stuff I don't um, don't freeze. Uh, it actually has a thing for expiry dates. Yeah, yeah. Um, so you, you know you can avoid uh, any food wastage and stuff like that just by um, uh, being on top of it. And you know if if you follow my Instagram thing, um, I'm, I'm a big supporter of the whole shorten your food miles paddock to plate. Um, there's a stack of farms down Gippsland that I um, do business with, to say to speak. Yep. <laughs> Um, yeah, no, that, I was actually going to ask you about that because um, I've obviously seen a lot of your stuff. You're very, uh, you know, from straight from farm to plate and sustainable farming. So I was going to ask you, like, what was that just a, a passion before you got into barbecue supporting local farmers or was that something you sort of, as time went on, you sort of realised you, you want to support well, the right people and all that sort of thing? Well, my old man was a originally a country veterinarian. So, yep. you know, our, our early days were in Hamilton and... Um, you, know, you sort of got an appreciation um, very early on um, of where your food comes from. Uh, yep. Under no illusion how that actually gets to our our plate, even yep. from a young age. And then, you know, I guess then you sort of fall into, um, you know, the average suburbanite where you just do whatever's convenient. And it was um, a number of years ago now, my wife and I just said, we want to know where our food comes from, you know. Um, and that's just not the meat, that's, you know, the veggies and stuff too and how it's grown and how it's treated. And, yep. you know, even though we eat a lot of animals, um, it doesn't mean they have to be treated poorly. 100%, you know? yep. The, the, the animal can have one bad day and that's, that's the day it gets prepared for, for us. Yep. Um, but this way you're supporting the farms direct as well. Like through the Prom Coast Food Collective, um, you know, 90% of what you spend goes straight to the farm. And yep. the majority of these farms are all just small family owned farms. Um, I see Macintosh farms are in here. I got a I got a lovely lamb off them oh, about a fortnight ago. Um, if you get over onto their website, you can get half lamb packs, old lamb packs, that stuff that it's all it's all butchered. So um, Yeah great. You know, you can request in a, in advance but there's, mm -hmm. there's so many of these small farms doing it now. It's, you know, with a bit of planning, okay, you don't have um, the convenience of just rocking up to your butcher. Um, yeah. The trade-off's worth it, though. Yeah, and, you know, the, with, with the pork I get, it's um, it's organic free range. Like the, the hey, Louise, <laughs> the, um, the entire farm is um, certified organic. So the paddies, yeah, right. the, pigs, yep. the pigs are just free roaming and stuff. And, you know, yep. can you taste a difference in the meat? Yeah, bloody oath you can. Yeah. Well, um, yep. It's, uh, especially with pork, you know, because, um, you know, there's, not, there's nothing worse than just dried out salty pork, you know. So yeah. Yep. Just yeah. So I guess, I guess, yeah, I think the answer to that thing is um, it's always sort of been something I've uh, wanted to support, but now I've got the yep. opportunity to do it. Um, it takes a couple of freezers. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> yeah. But, yeah. Um, and, and a good thing too is sometimes you just order the pack, you know, send mm -hmm. them half a lamb or, and, you know, don't even ask how you're, like with the pork, 10 kilos at a time. And I just take however they send it. So yeah, you yeah. might get roast or you might get pork bellies. So it's, it's like Christmas. Yeah, I, I, no, yeah right. I, I've got to get, got my, Get thinking now. Yeah, that's good. You got the thinking. element of surprise. That's good. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. But um, you know, no, that, that's great. You can do that, man, and, and, and be in that position to do that. It'd be, it'd be good if a lot more people had that ability to sort of do away with the convenience side and, and actually be able to, you know, assist uh, assist the farmers with that and and um, you know, make a lot more aware awareness around that too. And it's not easy. Um, Mm. When you initial, or well, it is easy. Initially, when you look at it, you think, "Oh, this is a bit expensive." But you've got to have a look that you won't be buying land, you know, for probably two yeah. months. Yeah. Um, once you break it down to a, a price per plate, 
Um, and there's really not that much difference in it. And, yeah. You know, yeah. And you've got to balance it up. Are you paying a little too much for the lamb sausages and the lamb mints? Yeah, absolutely. But you're not paying 45 bucks a kilo for the lamb racks either. Yes, so, exactly. Yeah. You know, and, and if yep. you don't like lamb racks, I don't know if we can be friends. So. <laughs> Sorry. Um, yeah, but you know, being able to support these small farms and stuff like that, because if, if, if you don't do it, they won't be there. 100%. You know, they, yeah. They just, they just won't be around. And so, um, um, at the end of the day, too, man, like, um, you know, whether it's time, and effort, and money, but um, if that's, you know, your your moral standpoint, and that's what you want to do, what you believe in, um, you know, we're, uh, action spell, speak a lot of the words, man, and um, you're doing it. So that, that, that's good. And even if, like, it's not like you're saying everything, you must get everything from a farm. Even if you just yeah. start to get 20% of your day, of your weekly shop, just slowly bring it up, slowly bring it up. Yeah. Um, we're at the point now where we're probably, oh, 95% we get from the farms. Pretty good. Yeah. Occasionally, yeah, good, we have to go out. Occasionally, we have to go out and get things. And yeah. Yeah, it's a, I like it because even with the veg and stuff, you get it's seasonal. Yep. So you can't sort of slack off and just do the standards. I'll do some broccoli, collie, potatoes, carrots. I'll be sweet. Yeah. yeah, yeah. That kind of thing. Um, you know, you get all, all kinds of things turn up and, you know, I've... <laughs> Um, I won't say I'm an expert in everything fruit and veg. I have had to message the farmers a photo and say, oh, what's this? So, <laughs> yeah. but, uh, that's, yeah. a, that, that's all part of it. That's all part of the farm. So for someone who's wanting to, to jump into that and wanting to start small, I mean, what, what would you recommend? Would it be as simple as just even going and buying, you know, uh, fresh eggs from free range chickens to begin with or something simple as that? Or what would you recommend? Yeah, it, um, start with eggs. I mean, one good thing is one of the big supermarkets now, uh, Coles, they're no longer doing caged eggs. Yep. So that's a great start. It's great, um, yeah. If, uh, there's, there's farm gates all, you know, all over the place. Um, we sort of started out just going, going to some of these farm gates and just sort of cherry-picking what we wanted, you know, mm -hmm. buy some of this, buy some of that. Then we saw, especially at the, at the start of COVID, um, when, you know, you, you, you couldn't go five metres from your house for more than five minutes kind of thing. Um, like, I, you know, first of all, I couldn't get to the fishmonger or anything. So um, we were just getting everything delivered in bulk. Yeah. And, yep. you know, if, you, if, you, if you're worried about uh, putting the money up front, get together with your neighbour or something or, or yeah. your family and just go, you know, yep. just go halves in the, in the land or which whatever. So... You know, the, 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 the bee, I mean, the way I do it is start with food you like. All right, so like, like me, I love lamb and pork. Yeah. Um, so if you're going to buy something from the farm, go, go and get the meat you like. And then, because you know what you're going to be comparing it to. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Know? Yeah. Oh, okay, I've been buying this from the supermarket for the last three years. Now I'm getting it straight from the farm. That's a really good Yeah, buy what you know you get. Yeah. Yeah, of <laughs> yeah, course. Good. Hmm. Um, and the good, and, and the good thing is, is like this. I mean, um, I'll, I'll message the farmers sometimes through Instagram or whichever, um, yep. or ring them up, and you know, what what's their opinion on the best way to cook something, or you know, when you're curious about a certain cut of meat, and you know, they're, they're mm. all more than willing to have a chat with you and stuff like that, and just a, that, that's real, real a bit like in the barbecue world, a real community. Community spirit, so um, yeah, I'd, I'd encourage anyone to have a crack. At it and yeah, great. Right. A, look, yeah. some people. No, nah, cool, man. That, that's. Thank God, you're right. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, look, some people's situations like um, you can't always do it. You might not have the room or anything like that, and that's why. Yeah, start small. Start tying your milk and eggs from from a farm. You know? yeah, there's always something you can do, um, whether it's small or whatever. There's always something you can start with. Nothing so. better. Nothing yeah. better. Ah, uh, great, man. So, did so did all that sort of obviously happen before yeah. barbecue for you, and that's sort of what you've got. So is that what leads you fire up the barbecue? Yeah. All right. So that's where the safari begins, so to speak, is it? That's you know, is that is that you know, we, um, 
did you go from you know, having all this and already wanting to support the local farming and then realising, you know, what's the best way to cook up all this meat? Yeah, or did you, you sort of tie two loves and passions together there? Everything you see. Well, what happened there? For last year? Oh, dear. <laughs> Have you got me? Ah, I think we've lost Mikey there, guys. Um, just give us a minute. Technology is good fun. <laughs> All right, we'll just jump back out and in, I think, because... Uh, G'day, Ryan. How you doing, mate? We've just uh, lost Mikey. He's just just knocked out, so we'll just try and dial him back. <laughs> he went on safari. <laughs> and he, uh, we'll just dial him back in. One sec. See if we can get him back on here. Ah, oh, good fun, hey? You got me? We're good? You there? Yeah. Can you hear me? Yeah, it just sounds like you've got a bit of reverb going on. Yeah. Hang on. No, nah, well, basically the... Um... Are, we, are we a bit clearer now? No. Nah. It's like you've got into slow motion. <laughs> yeah. How about now? Yeah, we're good. Any better? You okay, Andy? Oh, it's been going so well for the first 15 minutes. Damn. Hey, All right, let's, I'll jump back out and back in. Hang on. Work this afternoon. Yeah. All right. Yeah. All right. Well, what we're going to do, everybody? Oh, you're both okay? All right. Rayon reckons we're all right. No, uh, he's gone again. There we go. All right, how are we? Yeah, good. We're better? We're good? Loud and clear. Beautiful, okay. All right, looks like most people are still with us. Okay, so uh, I think the last question I had was, um, so did you end up tying all that love for local farming and barbecue together, or was it um, more because you had all this meat and, and uh, obviously livestock that was prepared and come to you in bulk and you had to figure out the most efficient way to cook it? Like, what, what came first, chicken or the egg? Uh, the barbecue. Um, the barbecue, I've, okay, yep. I've, I've always cooked. Um, it was a, a standard rule in, in our house that if you were living in living in the house, you had to cook for the family once a week, and that was from about age 12. Um, yep. I mean, I still remember my first cook for the family. It was ham, steak, and pineapples. <laughs> <laughs> no veg or anything. Ah, okay. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, right. <laughs> um, but, yeah, once I got into barbecuing, then, you know, you start to get a lot more serious about your meat, you know, what yeah. kinds of meat you're getting, and you start to get a bit, I guess, a bit more picky. Um, Pedantic, and then, yeah. And then it just sort of, it steamrolled from there. Then I realised that I can get this really good, organic, fantastic quality, free-range meat and stuff like this, um, yeah. and you're supporting the farm. So it, it just it just tied in, and... That was the, the, the whole safari bit. It's just like, you know, this, this is going to be a big adventure going come along for the yeah. ride kind of thing. Um, I, I started the Instagram account because I never wrote anything down. Yeah, so okay, right. Out of him then. Uh, I never wrote anything down. And so I started up the Instagram um, yep. to, um, so I had a record of what I did. And then it's just sort of taken off from there. It's, it's, it's been, and I've met some absolutely amazing people through, through barbecue and stuff like that, you know, made some really good friends out of it too, and and uh, you know, laughs along the way, and beers, and it's, it's all good. Yeah, that's it. It's uh, I, I said the same thing to uh, Phil the other week when we were talking. It was like I've been doing this for you know, five and a half, nearly six years, but I was like manually logging everything. I didn't, I, you know, it was still like very American to me. I didn't, apart from like uh, being in the forums for the Australian Barbecue um, Association and stuff like that where all you get is people judging every single thing you do. 
I didn't know that community was out there, and it was just like, oh yeah, hell, look at all these guys, and um, and here we are, man. It's awesome. Yeah, yeah and, and you know, it's uh, like a, a lot of us when you first get into it, you start looking at the American style, and I've got some mates here just absolutely paying out on me, so um, they'll keep <laughs> Tyler. <laughs> um, you know, we we we're so influenced by the American style, but then when you start looking at what the Brazilians do. Um, Mm, yeah, uh, and just uh, so many other countries, you know, cook o- cook over fire and charcoal and and all this kind of stuff. Yeah. Like I did some Filipino stuff for the first time um, the other day. This Filipino pork belly, and it's just sensational. Like right? it's, um, yeah. and that, that's what I want to do more of is just you know pick a country and go, okay, what's 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 one of the things they cook over charcoal, and then and then have a crack at it, and just uh, yeah, you know, exactly, keep, man. Keep, it- it, it brings you back, like, you, yeah, you see the doors that opens up, like, we go from Australian barbecuing to, you see what they're doing over in America, and then it's like, it just regresses back to primitive ads, like, just flame and, and meat, and then, like, like you were saying about the Brazilian stuff, like, it wasn't until I was paying attention to what they'd just done over in Brazil for meat stock, and seeing some <laughs> of the way they utilise fire, the way they're presented, or just the way they'll, you know, they hang the, hang the meat up, and the way they'll do things. It was just like, shit, it looks fun. It's stuff I've never thought of. It, it, how yeah. many other cultures out there are doing crazy different things with just your base with just fire and the protein? Like, yeah. And, a million and, uh, possibilities. You know, that, that way you're not just going to get sick of doing, you know, ribs and briskets and that kind of stuff. You know, for me anyway, yep. I like a bit of variety and, and uh, you know, trying different flavours and all the rest of it. Like when I did this Filipino stuff, um, like you use banana ketchup. I didn't ever, I didn't until two weeks before I did the cook. I didn't even know there was a thing called. I'm not in, but like I've never bloody heard of that ever. <laughs> banana ketchup, like <laughs> it awesome. sounds awful, but <laughs> it's awesome. It, no, no, it's 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 um it's really nice, really tangy, and there's a um yeah, okay, Filipino cool. grocer down in down in Pakenham. Yeah, right. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That uh, I drive down there to to get it. Yeah. So uh, okay. Yeah. But uh, yeah, as I said, that's that's what I want to do. Just you know, try different things, not just um, you know, you're always going to smash out the old favourites like a leg of lamb and stuff like that. Of course. But, yeah. Uh, well, yeah. You know, always try something different. That's it. That's um, the safari, hey. Yeah. Nah, that's yeah, good, man. And, and you know, it's not. You just don't have to read a barbecue book either. You can just look at a cookbook and then go, all right. How can I translate that into cooking over fire, or cooking over fire? Yeah, you know, all right. It's got to be, it's got to be cooked around a certain temperature and brought up to a certain temperature. Whether you stick it in the oven or you chuck it on one of your barbecues and yep. s- see what happens. So. Yeah, so nice. What barbecues have you got now? Oh, I've gone through that many. I've had so right now. I've got uh, just the basic Traeger, like Pellegrill, the um, the Pro Twenty Two. Uh, got right now. It's not the best one, but it's a Matador Bullet Smoker. I had a Pro Q, um, and that thing moulded from the inside out, unfortunately. So beyond repair. Um, I've got a couple of Jung Buck kettles, Matador kettle. Um, got a basic gasser. Um, yeah, in the past I've had um, I've had a Park offset. The chubby. Uh, I've had a yeah. pro smoke, uh, which is you know um, barbecue score sort of. Bre- uh, I'll say premium because it's they're pretty good builds, but the pro smoke yeah. brand. Um, so I've had their reverse flow, uh, and I've had their drum as well. So um, I, I had an issue. The offset was by far my favourite, but I had a major issue where our backyard had flooded under the area where it was sitting. Um, it was basically parked under an old clothesline and a tarp as a tent, and that was my barbecue area when I back in the early days. And it just, you can imagine how that went down, and it, the whole thing just flooded, and the yard, and it was just we had a huge rainstorm, and it, and it was done. Like it was beyond repair. So I haven't had another offset since that. Um, I've just had everything else. I think the only thing I don't have or haven't had would be a ceramic, like a uh, Komodo egg sort of grill, yeah, which um, yeah. they'll be next. So. I've had everything yeah. under the sun, though. Yeah, yeah, no, that's awesome. That's awesome. Yeah, I picked up an offset a while ago, you know, and that'll be uh, getting a workout. Um, there was a marketplace by um, Tyler, that Fire and Flame Barbecue. 
yep, being a better yep. influence, defending yourself <laughs> on market price. Um, yeah, I've, I've still just got, you know, Weather Kettles or Fornetto Razzo, uh, Bullet Smoker, got the Weather Baby Q, um, the yep. you know, small gaffer. Um, got what about the, uh, what about, how long did it take you to use the Alex? Say again? How long did it take you to use the, the Go anywhere? Oh, ages, yeah. And uh, yep. I'm, I'm, I'm banking, either Tyler or Ollie, uh, put you up to that. Tyler. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, well, it was his fault. I ended up get, picking up uh, what, three barbecues in about seven days. Yeah, right. <laughs> there was that GA that came up on Marketplace just in the next suburb for know, 50 bucks or something, I think. Yeah, so right, I, yeah. Yeah, I thought, right, I getting that. It was in good nick. Yep. Um, but then, uh, yeah, I ended up. Ended up lowballing a bloke with this offset on Marketplace just to see what would happen. He said, yeah, it's yours. And so by the time Tyler came round in the... Because uh, <laughs> um, yeah, I, I said yes to what, say, I'll get this offset smoker and I'll pick it up tomorrow night, six o'clock, you know, to try and get the deal done. Yeah. And the, bloke, yeah. <laughs> the bloke agreed to it. And, well, I don't have a trailer or anything. So that <laughs> took him Tyler up. <laughs> he came round with his trailer. I mean, by the time Tyler got to my place, I said, oh, we've got to go to another place too because I've just... Picked up another Razzo for 70 bucks. So, <laughs> out driving around on a Friday night collecting barbecues was, uh, was a good night. <laughs> yeah. I can't um, have too many, man. It's It becomes a real nah, weird addiction. Like, right, people don't right. get it, but we do. It's all right. <laughs> yeah. Well, well, I mean, I've even got one of the little Jamabak um, hibachi grills. Yeah, yeah. And, I mean, th- th- they're great on a, you know, if you want to do a quick cook and just some skewers, you know, meat on a stick, you can't beat it. Um, yeah. They take no time to fire up, no time to cook on. You know, so yeah. when, when people say, oh, you know, there's too much muck in the to set up the barbecue. Well, not if you pick the right yeah. one. If you need a quick cook, yeah. pick it and jump on it and, and, and get into it. Yeah, I actually um, had like that a couple of years ago. I just set up, stacked some bricks together. I didn't cement them or anything. Like, uh, it didn't last long, but I just set up some bricks and put a grain under it and just, yeah. like, and just stay there too. and just, oh, just sweep them out just in the backyard, like, yeah. langy has got 26 webers. How's that for greedy? 26? That's, you got to, there's a collector. Some of them have to be rich, surely. They're going to be those uh, no, originals no, there. No, no, Tyler, I don't have a Prula yet. <laughs> yet. I want one. All right, what about your knives? How many knives have we got? Come on. <laughs> oh, I, I don't know. Uh, you don't know? A lot. Too many to count. Yeah. 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 Um, that, you, you know, you use, when you said before, it comes a bit of an addiction. Yeah, these um, um, Madeiras knives, um, you know, they're handmade in, uh, in Brazil. Yeah, And um, yep. Mauricio up on the Gold Coast, um, he imports them in. And yep. I love them. I love them. Yeah, and, uh, oh, it looks like Tyler's counted for you, 187. <laughs> yeah, and, yeah, and that's just the cleavers. Yeah, I've got it. I don't know. Yeah, I've got a lot of cleavers too, so I just like them. Um, yeah, good The thing fun. is too is like, you know, I, I use them. Yeah. Um, it's like a, the chop. You know, I got a, one of the chopping boards, um, the food studio. We're, we're yeah, yeah. They have a really good special on those um, those brisket. I really want to get a hold of one of them. That'd be awesome. Um, yeah, and like get your logo on it, that kind of thing. I said, oh, I'll get yeah. one of those. And then when you get it, you go. <laughs> This is a bit nice. You know, I, can't, I can't put meat What's on this. What's the next one? And then I just went, oh, it. You know, it's like, you know, if I wanted a sign, I would have bought a sign. So I'm going to use it. And so, um, you know, mine's got knife marks in it and everything already. And Mitch from Food Studio just said, it's so good seeing it used. He said about 80% of his customers write to him and say, it's so nice, I don't want to use it. Yeah. So, like with all those knives, I use them. Um, yep. You know, it, well, one thing is, okay, yeah, if you get, you know, a bit of a, a, a flash knife, look after it. You know, yeah. The, 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 it's all about the aftercare with knives, and they'll, they'll laugh you for donkeys. They'll look after you. Um, like, you know, don't dick around with bunk knives. Um, get get a good knife, look after it, and it's going to look after you for forever and a day. Yeah, that's but, it. Um, so speaking of knives... Yeah. <laughs> I want to talk about the Cleaver Crew? How did that all come about? I mean, I've, I've heard have little bits of insight into all of that, but I want to know the full story, man. I mean, 
yeah. what a cool little game. <laughs> yeah, well, it all started. I got a cleaver um, with Mikey written down the, yeah. the blade of it. Yeah. And um, and that was from um, the custom chef, which is part of back around Australia. And so, uh, this cleaver, and then a couple of other people started. It. You know, said, "Oh, where'd you get it from?" And you know, a few people got them, and and this was sort of just as COVID was starting. Yeah, right. And, okay. You know, and we we're going into lockdown and everything, and just before COVID, um, we'd gone to a big lunch at the Blue Bonnet. Okay. And, yeah, yeah, yeah. You met a lot of people. Yeah, you met a lot of people for the first time, and then mm. after that, you know, everyone sort of stayed in touch on. Um, you know, on social media and things like that. And then there was just sort of a group of us that just kept chatting and we um, started up a group chat thing. And I don't, I don't, even, I don't I'm not sure even who, I think Ollie might have come up with the name, Cleaver Crew. And because yeah, right. by then, by then everyone had a cleaver with their name on it, kind of thing. Yeah. And um, it, look, it was really good for all of us through lockdown. Um, of course, you know, men's mental health never gets spoken about enough at the best of times. During COVID, like, if, it, it, if you didn't have a struggle of a time at some point through COVID, that's incredible because you know, if, yeah. everyone, uh, everyone had their, um, their, their ups and downs. But the thing is, you had this crew of people there and you had this group chat yeah. that any time of the day or night, you could just jump in and, you know, Talk barbecue or you know, talk shit. <laughs> just um, yeah, it's just a space to you know get away and all the rest of it. And um, we were cursed for a while because we were trying to <laughs> we we're all trying to catch up. And uh, yeah, because the idea is we wanted to have like rolling barbecues, like where every two months you'd have a barbecue at someone's place and you'd have everyone yeah. around. Yeah. But then because of lockdowns, we couldn't we couldn't do anything. Um, yeah. I think about th- yeah. three times we tried to catch up, and I kept joking and saying, "Oh, we'll probably get locked down again," and we did. <laughs> so I, I sort of cursed a few of them. Yeah, that was cursing us. <laughs> <laughs> but um, yeah, we, 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 you know, everyone's become good friends, and you know, Troy um, from uh, Beard Street Barbecue, yep. who you know got that <laughs> absolutely monster custom maker. Um, yeah, you had a first and big catering gig out at BC Cider a few weeks back, and we were a pile out there, and just, you know, I picked in, and, and you know, it's, just, it's just good fun, it's just that community thing, and, and you know, for, for, for men's mental health, with a small group of people like that, you know, you, if you go back, what, three years ago, I don't think any of us knew each other. You know, and, mm. and, and now you've developed these you know, really good mates and stuff like that. And, and the, the good thing about the group too is, you know, you, you have your brain fades when you're cooking. And you just go, oh, bloody, yep. can't run down and do shit. Or what temperature should, you know, do I need to bring this up to? And you just throw it in the group chat. And because it's, it's quite diverse, like we've got everything from people who have got experience with pellet smokers, you know, people who have got more experience using offsets, People got yep. you know, better experience with weavers, so there's there's nearly there's nearly a person in the group who can answer a question, depend, you yep. know, no matter what sort of smoke it is, and that, that that's great having that sort of resource. And, uh, and For yeah, sure. it's a bit of fun because I mean, you know, we went a bit overboard. We went and we got, um, well, we we got the Cleaver Crew barbecue Instagram page, and then we got T-shirts, and then we got stickers and aprons. Yep. And that's just sort of yeah. there, you know. It, yeah, good fun with something to do during lockdown, and, and, and the balls just get rolling. Yeah, it's good, man. I think it's going to become a reoccurring theme as I, I talk to guests each week because I mean, it really is insane how this community is so inviting. And like you said, on men's mental health, I mean, everyone went through something, and the fact that if you're sitting there playing with a fire, you're mucking around with temperatures or cook times, and you're not focused on any of the other shit that's going on. You're not hearing the news. You're not paying attention. You're in it. You're in that moment. It, it's yeah. really like therapy, and that's what I found for me for quite a long time. It's just a shame that I never really, I didn't really didn't jump on the socials until um, you know around Christmas time last year. 
um, and, yeah. and found everybody doing the same thing. But and, and I wish I found it earlier totally just because... Agree with you. You know, yeah, I totally agree with, with the, um, uh, you know, that, like, that happy space thing. You know, I often mm-hmm. refer to this as my Zen space where, you know, whatever's gone on in the world, whatever's gone on that day, I come out here, I've got my little kitchen, I've got all my barbecues and this, uh, and I can just I can just lose myself in it. And, you know, yep. I, I have an absolute ball, and it just gets you away from everything for a while. And, and um, you know, and you're feeding your family as well. And so you've, you've come out and done your own thing and everything, and then when you, you go in and you just see people enjoying what you've, what you've cooked. Like 100%, yeah. You know, I love it. It might only seem like a small thing. Yep. But when people are knocking back the, the it's, you know, and it's, um, but there's nothing better than just sitting around cooking food, eating and having a couple of beers. Like, 100%, yeah. You know, I you think you want, you know, so, what's the first uh, one I've experienced that on a major level there. was, um, but, um, I mean, I, I genuinely, yeah. you know, see, see, see it as therapy. Yeah, no, the, I, the, the first time I, I sort of had that experience on a big level was um, it was a while, a few years, it was well before COVID, but it was um, my son's fourth or was it his fourth or fifth birthday and um, we had a hell of a lot of people and I had the offset there. Oh, you got me? No. Nah. Uh, everyone watching, is, our, is the connection theme all right or... Yeah, yeah. You we're good, Mikey? Yeah. Yeah, we're good? Mm-hmm. No. Nah. Yeah, I can hear you loud and clear. You can't, you can or can't? Can. Oh, you can? Oh, okay, yeah. yeah all right, it was a bit of a delight, yeah. Uh, all right, anyway, um... No, so we, we had a whole heap of people coming in the next day. I had the offset smoker out and we were just doing a, um, a few big briskets and it was that all-night cook sitting up with the fire, being completely <laughs> knackered and over it the next day, reeking of, like, um, reeking of smoke and you're just, you're just done. Like, fried, everyone comes over and you've got to play, hey, how are you? But then when everyone ate it, it was like taste buds set alight. They're like, holy shit, like, we've never had anything like this. And it was from that yeah. moment, you're like... I'm completely fried, but man, like what a reaction to see everybody react that way. And it's just like, everyone's, you're doing it next time, you're doing it next time. And it's it's just, it feeds that fuel, man. It's like, yeah. it's that happy place. Just even if by the end of the day you're over it, it's a long day at work or whatever, yeah. sitting by that fire, reeking of smoke, sitting there with a drink and just cooking. It's, there's something so zen about that that shuts off the rest of the world. Mm. I think we got the delay again. It's a lot, of, a lot of silence happening. Oh yeah, it's absolutely. And, you know, the best thing is if, if you do it at your house, okay, you've got to do the hard work, you've got to do the cleaning, but but you're only going to be five meters from your bed. Yeah, don't have to worry about taxes or anything. No, that's it, man. Well, I think we're getting some really weird delay going on here. So um, I don't see if people are dropping off. So um, we might leave it there, man. But thanks for jumping on. It was uh, awesome to finally chat to you. I know we've been messaging back and forth a little bit, and it's uh, it's good to finally talk and have a beer and a bit of banter. So um, it looks like you're loading again. I think we've lost you again for the fourth time. <laughs> but um, if you come back or if you don't, uh well, wait a minute. See if he wants to say goodbye to all our uh, uh, our brilliant uh, fans who are tuned in. <laughs> He's gone. We'll see if we can dial him back in one more time, everybody. And everybody say, see ya, Mikey. Just remember, it's his internet, not mine. <laughs> Is he coming back? Oh. Uh, yeah, I, I think he's dropped out, everyone. 
All right, we'll leave it there. Um, thanks to Mikey for jumping on. Thanks for everyone for listening and tuning in. Enjoy yourselves a Friday night. Thanks for tuning in, and we'll see you in a couple of weeks.